What's going on, everybody? I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching The Sit Down. The Affair coming back to Showtime. Julia, Goldani, Tais, what's going on? Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi, DJ Sixsmith. It's very nice to How have you. How are you? you? <laughs> nice good. to see you. Yeah, I love good. your music. Oh, you love my music? Yeah, yeah I love yeah. your work. Freshman year of college, everyone was like, are you a DJ? Are we going out and listening to music? And you said music? yes. I tried, to get, I tried to play it off. It didn't last too long. It didn't last long. No, definitely not. I'm sorry. It's all good. R.I.P. How's everything going with you? It's going great. This is a really flattering image you have of me up yeah. here. Yeah, you like this one here? Yeah, <laughs> and I like the I like the outfits that we both yeah, kind of coordinated. Yeah, we both got this uh, black and white thing going. Yeah, we, we got the politician look here. That's right. It's kind of like a Hillary Clinton. I like it. The pantsuit. Homage. Yeah. Thank you. You gotta have <laughs> I it. I tried really hard. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. Of course. So Sunday's the big day. Season five. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> I was like, what big day? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's one? the thing. Like, you you film this, and like, how long ago did this whole thing wrap up for you? Um, we finished in May here in New York, mm -hmm. and uh, but I've been doing it since I was 18, right. so it feels like a, a six-year chapter that's closed. It's been very interesting. How would you describe that six-year chapter? Um, I feel like I went through a lot of parallels, family-wise mm -hmm. and personally, with that person. With it's me, yeah. like this, <laughs> with my character, um, and I. Uh, I mean, I went through. I finished. I had just finished high school when I mm. when I started, and then I went through a lot of college on the show, and I definitely like grew emotionally mm. with her, and I learned a lot from working with like this amazing cast about how to be an adult and how not to be an adult. Just yeah, <laughs> there's a few things maybe to avoid along the way yeah. in adulthood. Yeah, it gets a little messy, you know. It's hard. Yeah, it Absolutely. might not be as hard as like they make maybe it. Maybe not seem. as complicated. <laughs> yeah, as this. they're yeah. Yeah, but no, it seems it's difficult. difficult. Yeah, how's it going for you? Figuring out along the way. Yeah. But, but like we're both in our 20s right now and it's a really big time of maturity and also just to kind of get outside of your lane and figure your stuff out. It's terrifying. People in their 30s say that <laughs> your 20s are horrible <laughs> and it's like worse than middle school. Well, everybody looks forward to your 30s, right? They think they're going to have it all figured out. Yeah. And then some people get there and they're like, I still don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, but you have decided. <laughs> Sorry, I'm taking the interview off. <laughs> you flipped it on me. <laughs> You've decided to get married at like quite a young age and that's kind of amazing because it's a little different people, for our generation right well i feel like most people don't feel self-possessed enough to like make take that step until their 30s right. so i feel like you're already a little bit in your 30s a little bit i think with me i'm a little bit older in some ways mm -hmm. and then some things just kind of still go over my head cool. do you feel that way with you yeah definitely <laughs> i'm ready to get married <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, but I feel like very, uh, I think like the political climate is mm. such and the past, I mean, this presidency has been Absolutely. such a nightmare yeah. that like we've, I've felt like I've had to grow up very quickly um, because of just being exposed and overexposed to like everything that's going on. Yeah, you, can, you can't me. avoid it. You can't avoid it's it. It's impacting your life but every day. It's also kind of scary because I feel like there's so much bullshit that mm -hmm. you're also, um, like numbed to it a little bit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, absolutely. It's like, oh, what's he going to say today? What right. are we another gonna, day, another, another day, another, And then you don't take it seriously when until you see images and you read, you know, reputable sources. And, yeah. But so I feel like very grown up in that way. And then, like, I got a dog way too young. And I'm How trying to... At 22, so it's okay. two years ago, but I'm, I'm like a I'm, full dog mom. I'm thinking about getting a dog. You should definitely get Never a dog. Never had a dog. Fiance wants a dog. It's the She's best all decision in. Kayla's ever made. like, we gotta have a dog. I'm like, we just moved in. Can we just like settle in a little bit? No, <laughs> literally no. And but the hard thing for me was like, you have to take care of this thing, and I don't know how to discipline anything mm. yet. So I feel very young in it's that way. It's weird to do that, right? Yeah. You're like 22, and you're saying no. Don't I'm like do a this. teen mom. <laughs> I'm like, you're good. Shit, right there. That's yeah, fine. just do your thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My publicist is loving this. <laughs> like, can we get back to the show? Yeah. Really sorry. No. But you mentioned how you were started this when you're 18, you're in college, you're balancing both of those things. What yeah. did life look like for you when you were first starting the whole show? Um, so this is the second show I've ever done. I did a show for one season called Bunheads when I was in high school, at mm -hmm. the very end of high school. Um, but I just stopped being a ballerina like, right. like two years earlier. So I was kind of, had just started acting. Um, right before I did the show, I interned for this professor at Princeton and we went on a trip to Europe to study um, the evolution of the Jewish ghetto from mm. 
Rome and Venice to Poland wow. to the ultimate concentration camps. And so I had a really like meaningful, eye-opening summer. And I didn't know if when I came back I wanted to apply to school. And um, I mean, pe he wanted me to apply to Princeton and I had just spent all this time with these Princeton people. So I thought maybe I'd do that. Um, and my show, my other show had just gotten canceled. So mm -hmm. I was kind of like debating what to do. And I went to LA for a little while to visit my uncles and um, I got an audition for this and uh, it was like the best, I mean I hadn't read that many scripts but yeah. it was like a very good pilot. Absolutely. And um, I was really inspired by Sarah Tream, our showrunner, who's really, who was, she's still very young but she was very young when she wrote this and she had just graduated from Yale and she's um, just had a really good voice for teenage girls. And so this kind of set me off on a really different fortunate trajectory where we shot in New York and I got to go to Columbia for a little while. And it's a nice gig, yeah. It was a great, it's a great gig, yeah. yeah. And you had the whole Ivy League thing going on too. So mm -hmm. it was at Princeton at first, and then boom, here you are with Columbia. Yeah, well, my parents um, taught at Princeton, mm -hmm. so I felt like that would be a little incestuous. So you wanted your own thing? Well, I wanted to feel like I got in on my own. I gotcha. And, yeah. Um, especially in lieu of the oh, USC yeah. I mean, scandals. <laughs> well, Not that anything is happening that, yeah, over yeah. there, but <laughs> um, yeah, I just I wanted to do, and I wanted to live in the city and mm. have my own place. I had a tiny apartment in the West Village, and I you would commute. And then we would shoot this in the summer, and it's, it's a lot of New York actors. Maura lived really close to me, mm -hmm. and I would see her all the time, and Kathy Chalfant, who plays my grandma. Mm -hmm. um, so it felt very, I felt very grounded in New York because of this show. That's awesome. So when do you feel like this started to become a thing? Because five seasons, it's cut through. Like, when does it start to really build up, in your opinion? What do you mean? When, like, when does the affair become a big deal in your eyes in terms of, like, how it cuts through the TV landscape? after five seasons? When do you think that point was throughout well, the show? Well, I think it's interesting because like when we started, I was just talking to Sarah Tream about this, like when we started we were kind of entering this sort of golden age of television mm -hmm. and it wasn't how it is now, which right. is like, I mean there's so much good stuff and at the same time it's so saturated. Yeah, there's a lot, it's overloaded at times. But there was still like prestige cable, it was mm -hmm. pre-streaming, so it was like a little bit, um, I think more special when it came out and now you know, we've been so lucky that it's been on for so long and it has a, uh, people watch it. Right. Um, so it's nice that it's held up in the current landscape, but I think that when it started, it was definitely like a, in a special moment. And I think it's, I don't know if we would be able to make it now in the same way. Yeah, it's really interesting because this is a show that you could really binge and, and get into. Yeah. And this was like right at the beginning of binging. A binging, and, you know? yeah. Well, you can wa you can binge it in retrospect, but at the same time, like I remember we had to wait for Sunday nights right. for it to come out. Yeah. I was like live tweeting. <laughs> That's yeah. not a thing anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, it's changed very much. It certainly has. And even Showtime's evolution too, with some of the new shows that Showtime's rolled out. Yeah. Like, this kind of blended Showtime's past and Showtime's present in a sense. You know? Yeah, it really has. Um, and they've, they've switched creative heads over there, so mm. it's kind of it's all evolving. Yeah, and you have to adapt based on what's going on, too. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, DJ. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me a little bit more about the show, and tell me about Whitney here, because, like you said, you're looking at this person here, and you think about yourself in some ways, and you think about a different person also. So what have been some of the challenges in playing Whitney? Um, well, it's been nice because I think, like, especially at the beginning of your career I've heard and I've observed with people that I look up to like you sort of play like a version of yourself mm -hmm. and I think I mean I was never that bratty but I think I don't know maybe my parents <laughs> would say different <laughs> she was worse um, but I, I wasn't but I think it's definitely hard um, because she had a very tumultuous like family right. relationship to begin with but I think she's also the oldest kid so she saw her parents have like a really great marriage so it was interesting sort of examining like the downfall of a family unit mm. through someone who's still at like a very developmentally crucial and fragile time. Um, I think that gave me more empathy for, for people my age and it made me I think a better listener and a better friend mm. because I, we had so many conversations on this show about families and, and breakdowns of marriages and now this season we, she has a perspective. Right. Um, for three episodes, and so we see how her lack of good role models um, has influenced her own life. She self-sabotages, and she's not great at being in a relationship, mm -hmm. and she's not super faithful, and... Um, it has ripple effects. Uh, you know, yeah. Your parents' behavior, 
generational it, trauma. It, it most certainly does, yeah. and I'm sure those conversations on set were pretty fascinating because some families deal with stuff and other families just kind of gloss over things and then years later it has all these ripple effects. Exactly. Well, and Sarah Treem's really generous about talking about sort of her own experiences and what she drew on to to make this show, and I think she feels really close to this character, and so talking to her about what it was like for her when she was young and what it was like um, for me and sort of having like a melding of those two experiences mm -hmm. and making this is really cool, Absolutely. strange. So you mentioned Sarah and some of the other women that you look up to, whether it's this show or industry-wide, who are people you look to and you're like, I like what that person's doing, I like what this person represents. Well, in this show, I mean, I've had the greatest examples. I think Maura Tierney is like one of the most amazing yeah. uh, actresses that we have. I think she's so, she's so smart. And I always tell her she should direct because she's really, has a really good bird's eye view of things. She blocks scenes super well. Like I've, and she, and nobody's ever been, I've always asked people for acting advice on mm. the show, like very annoyingly. Yeah, yeah. And but you're at the start of your career, you want that. Yeah, but they've never been like pretentious or like preachy about it. They're just like, oh, well, they're very um, sort of like collaborative and mm -hmm. sweet about it. And Ruth Wilson has, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if you've seen Mrs. Wilson. I haven't, But no. that's based on her actual right. family story and the fact that she like brought that to BBC is incredible. And they're just very poised and intelligent. Kathleen Chalfont's like an iconic mm. theater actress. and. Um, she's married to this amazing artist and they live in Brooklyn and it's also kind of shown me that like a lot of the people I look up to have really balanced lives mm. which is what I strive for and yeah. what you strive for. Yes, absolutely. I think. I think it's what we all should strive for. Yeah. Because you know? we can enjoy our work, it's a good thing, but also there's just much more to life. There's relationships, there's stuff to do outside of work. Yeah, you I know? think there's like a really capitalist narrative of like work hard, play hard. Right. And, like, you know. Hustle, uh, do all yeah, those. Yeah, be you know? a workaholic yeah. and like that's no, you run yourself into a wall. Yeah, you know? and you need support and you need perspective. Right, and especially like we mentioned it before, just like a global perspective. Like mm -hmm. you lived in Brazil, you yeah. traveled all around the world. How has that impacted you at, at this point in your life? Um, that was a really seamless, like, go into that that's question. That's what I do, that's Thank what we do. Thank you for that, you're really good at that. Um, well, I, first of all, that's really, uh, I'm super lucky mm -hmm. because that's um, just to have like a multicultural family especially now because it gives me perspective on everything that's like going on in Absolutely, this country. Yeah. But um, I think growing up in Brazil was really formative for me because uh, it's much more of like a spontaneous, relaxed sort of uh, beachy culture. I lived Beautiful in Rio for country, a while. Yeah. yeah, and sometimes it gets me in trouble because I, I have a hard time being on time to like social engagements mm. because in Brazil when they're so like 4 back. p.m. it's like, that means like we'll be there at seven. <laughs> like it, it's not. Um, so your friends are like, Julia, can you just show up? Maybe like a half hour. They'll the tell time? me the wrong time that's so that I show that's up what we earlier. Have to do with some yeah, um, but uh, it got me really, I think, in touch with my body, which made me start dancing. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up like going to a farm all the time in the south of Brazil, mm -hmm. and that got me really in touch with animals. I used to raise chickens, but not in like a the sweet life way. Sure. I love that show, by the way, the Paris Hilton show, <laughs> yeah. where they're like, mm, chickens. Right. But like, it wasn't like that. No. It was like actual like mud and chickens. A little chickens more gritty. And yeah. yeah. And um, sort of, it helped me be in nature. And I've, I used to be really embarrassed that I spoke Portuguese because when you're little, you just want to fit in. But now I think it's kind Why of are you a embarrassed superpower. About that? I'm not anymore. Yeah. No, I think it's I think it's a cool thing. I think it, it taught me that it's cool to be different than the average. Just be who you are, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's your family history there. Yeah. So you can speak Portuguese, you can speak English. I can speak Spanish. You can speak Spanish. But I sound super Brazilian speaking it, so I... I that makes sense. Yeah. I can see that. So only three languages, that's it? Only three. <laughs> yeah. My six-year-old niece speaks four. Really? Lithuanian, German, English, Portuguese. Well, you get it at a young age, and it can hit. It's, it can hit. Yeah. Well, I did, like, honor Spanish growing up, and then I went to Barcelona with my fiancé. Whoa. And we got there, and I couldn't speak a lick. You were like, babe, like, don't worry, I got there. Yeah. <laughs> no, literally <laughs> walked up like, to customs, and it was like, well, word Well, because they speak so fast. Yeah. I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. But anyway, um, thinking about your life, ballet was obviously a big part of things. Yeah. What is the biggest misconception about being a ballerina and doing that whole thing? I don't know. I thought Black Swan was pretty accurate. Yeah, it was I on point. I think it's a glamorization, it's a sexualization of sure. something that's like, you know, it's very hard athletic work. It's very unnatural for your body. Um, ballerinas, I think, are like the most disciplined, mm. strong people ever. Um, but it's definitely, I mean, it's a mixed bag. It taught me a lot of discipline. It taught me a lot of um, 
dedication. Like you, you rehearse like six hours a day. It taught me that like the first time you look at a scene, you're not going to get it right. Like right. the second time, you're not. You're, that you just have to kind of keep doing it, and you can't be afraid to fail. Um, and then I think it's also it was hard, you know, with with body image, and it's it wasn't good for my body. I have like the body of a 95 year old now. Like mm. I still dance, but yeah. like you know, no, everything hurts on you. Yeah. all the time. Yeah. And um, but it was an interesting transition because I I learned how to act. I got my first acting job because it was a show about ballerinas, so I sort of learned how to act through dancing. When do you think your identity shifted from ballet to acting? I think I always, I mean, I always secretly really, really liked acting, mm -hmm. but I was like kind of shy about that because I grew up in LA and a lot of, I grew up around a a lot of people whose parents were actors and in the industry and they were kind of like, oh, don't do that to your kid right. and my parents never really let me. Um, so I think it was always both. Like I really liked the performative aspect of dancing and like the storytelling. Right. So I feel like it was just kind of always there. Um, but yes, o only very recently have I been able to be like, oh yeah, I I'm an actress. <laughs> Like yeah, maybe it, it a takes year time, ago. right? Yeah. Even though you've been on this show <laughs> for five seasons, six years of your life, yeah, still I still a don't long really time coming. Yeah. Feel like I know what I'm doing half the time. But we're all kind of just still figuring it out. We're just know? winging it, <laughs> DJ. <laughs> Let's just be honest about it. Right? Yeah. Are you winging it? Yeah. 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 Because yeah. some people, when they say like, "Oh yeah, I got this," they, they probably don't. No. You know, there's a lot of BS in this world. Well, fake it till you make it. Right. Which I don't like necessarily. I'd rather just be honest, say like, "Listen, I don't know how to do this." Well, what I can I learn? That's I, what's really cool about Gen Z. Yeah. Like the generation a tiny bit under us. Mm -hmm. Like Billie Eilish as their <laughs> overlord or <laughs> the whatever. Face of Gen Z. Yeah, which I love. But like um, I was reading this really interesting post that Cassie David, do you know who she is? No, who's that? She's um, she's a comedian and a writer and uh, but she's Larry David's daughter, so oh, she's okay, really funny. Yeah, yeah. But she's very good in her own right, right. And she wrote this thing about how it used to be that you went on Instagram and people like bragged about their vacations mm -hmm. and now they talk about like their mental illnesses yeah, and that's yeah. like the same sort of flex and so it's kind of like pointing out the hypocrisies in that but at the same time I think it's really valuable that everyone's talking about their insecurities now Absolutely. even if it's like a you know sort of sometimes it's a thing for likes sure but it's important especially mental health I mean there yeah. were so many years where we didn't even touch this no and to be a, you know a middle school girl that's dealing with body image and it's like I'm going to therapy right yeah. or it's like seeing people who Billie Eilish talks about self-harm why am I talking about Billie Eilish <laughs> I just read her Rolling Stone profile yeah, yeah. no a really interesting person and yeah. somebody that's just putting it all out there this is me and if you like me, great. If you don't, then that's fine. And people are really comfortable with that yeah. now. And, and that's I think amazing. that's something you kind of go through, whether it's your late teenage years, early 20s. Like, it kind of hits for everybody in a different time, I feel like. Yeah, I'm, I'm blacking out right now. I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> am I doing okay? <laughs> You're doing just fine. <laughs> cool. Are you blacking out, too? No, I great. feel good. Okay, thanks. No, but um, when you think about your journey, like, you have this show, you have a show in high school. And yeah. you have this show that hits, like, some people it hits right away. Some people it can take until their 30s and 40s until something really hits. So do you put that in perspective in terms of being, like, I'm in my 20s, I've been on a network show, like, I'm going to enjoy this right now as opposed to just thinking about the whole long-term game here? Well, I don't really think about, like, what hits. Um, I think about, like, the writing's really good, mm -hmm. the cast is really good. I'm learning a lot. It feels like intensive acting class for for five sure. years that I got paid for. Like it feels <laughs> like I should be paying Absolutely. them. Um, but I, I don't think I can think about it in terms of like hitting or not hitting because I think that's like a huge trap. And I want to hopefully have a long career and try a lot of different things. And I, I feel like you know half of the things I do probably no one will ever see. But that's mm. not why you do them. No. It's because it's like your life experience and your journey. Yeah, and you enjoy it, or if it's a good script, you're working with great people. And you meet people, and you, yeah, you learn. Absolutely. And I would love to, like, write one day, and so mm. it's just, like, reading good stuff and trying to do it. Writing scripts, writing... Yeah, I would love to write scripts. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. I have no idea how... I just did a um, TV show that BJ Novak directed. Oh, nice. And yeah, I was yeah. like, how do you do it, BJ? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, just make stuff you want to show your friends. Mm. And I think that's such good advice. That's great advice. Like make your friends laugh. Absolutely. Because yeah. if you start to think about millions of people who are going to watch this or the country at large, like, no. you're not going to do it the way you want to do and it. And they honestly, like, they probably won't. There's, yeah. like, a lot right. of content. <laughs> yeah. So that's, like, just takes the pressure And off. a lot of stuff doesn't work out. You know, you get 
to get a, get a pilot, never gets greenlit, to get yeah. a season of this. Like, that's why having five seasons of this, like, that, it's significant. That's you know? really cool. It doesn't cool. happen all the time. Yeah, I, yeah, I do not take that for granted. Mm. So I assume you watched The Office growing up, working with DJ Noah. Um, I miss watched out on? The Office a little bit. I kind of grew up under a rock. Like yeah. I wasn't really allowed to. I, um, I mostly was like, read. Was like made. I liked reading. Well, you had but, academic parents. Yeah. It seemed like there was a ton so of reading. I wasn't on. really um, cultured in the like television and film landscape, gotcha. which I'm trying to catch up on yeah, now. Yeah. But um, I watched like The Adams Family mm. and. Uh, like a werewolf documentary on National <laughs> Geographic. I had like a very weird <laughs> palette. It's really interesting. So what do your parents teach? Um, sociology. Hmm. My dad does uh, race, ethnicity, and migration. Oh, wow. He just put out a book, actually. I was telling him, I was reading all this stuff in The New Yorker about, you know, uh, immigration and, and, um, and race. And mm -hmm. like they're putting out all this amazing content. And I was like, you need to write something like yeah. more mainstream because he writes academic right. works and they're great. But I would like to like open a magazine and read something. Absolutely. And then my mom um, teaches sociology, uh, sociology and it's uh, gender, family, and uh, sexuality, mm. which is really cool yeah. because uh, I was like a feminist at three. <laughs> <laughs> my fiance got her master's in gender studies. She did? Yeah. That's so cool. What Lehigh. does she do now? Uh, she's a sports writer now, but wow. has that passion too. I mean, that's a very, we've been fighting the fight for Absolutely. a long time. So. Yeah. It's and good. Does she? Do you guys talk about it? Together? Oh, all the time. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. And even just like the the label feminist, like for me as a man, that was something that I was like, I haven't really seen other guys say they're feminist. Say they're feminist, but no. now I'm like, no, I'm I'm a feminist. Well, you I know? couldn't say I was a feminist in at my liberal New York high school because they'd be like, oh, Julie right. is a feminist. And now it's like a, you know, capitalist marketing item of like, mm. you buy a mug and it says feminist, <laughs> which I'm fine with. Sure. But I'm glad that you know we need to get people on board and like a sort of holistic yeah and just like getting past the label getting past the stereotype and just actually unpacking what these things that mean. it's just literally equality right <laughs> i just want to have equality for men and women like, is i that don't too think much that it should ask? be i read macy williams was like i don't think people uh should be called feminists i think that like not feminists right should be just labeled like assholes she said something <laughs> roughly like that yeah, in the rolling sense. stone a couple years ago and i was like yeah, yeah that's on point why didn't we think of that right so whether it's with like the stuff that we're watching or stuff going on in the world i feel like everybody's just more informed so it may not yeah. be as pretty to see what lies underneath but we both know it what, needs to get out there yeah and we have to talk about it because yeah. otherwise we'd be going stir crazy with all this stuff yeah i agree so definitely an important thing so when people check this out on sunday what are the big thoughts you want them to have about season five? Oh my goodness. Well, um, Anna Paquin's in it. Yeah. Which is really cool. She's great. True blood. Um, let me think. What are the thoughts that I want them to have about season five? Uh, it's a lot about um, how your past and every decision you make really impacts your future. And that even the tiniest things that you think are useless when you're... Um, when you choose to be like dismissive of people who mean something to you mm. or you choose to be to cheat on them yeah. <laughs> or you know i don't know run someone over with your car and <laughs> <season two. laughs> um that has consequences yeah. and it affects your children and it affects everyone around you and basically uh it's just about it's just about consequences i don't know what is it about that's great she's like wrap it up <laughs> land the boat <laughs> land the plane that's it no that's good has this made you think about your own family experience in a different way? Um, yeah, yeah. I've thought a lot about, uh, it really humanizes everyone. It mm. humanizes your parents, it humanizes, you know, because it's nice that you see perspectives because right. we see our parents as like these sort of superheroes. superheroes. Yeah. And, and to see that, that they're struggling with the same things yeah. that we're struggling with is really amazing. No question. Well, Julia, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks, DJ. Thanks a lot. The Affair, Season 5, Sunday, August 25th. Check it out on Showtime. It's Julia, I'm DJ. See you next time here on The Sit Down.